Hello everyone. Hope you guys are doing well. Well, I'm Govinda Das, Associate Manager on Software Engineering at Red Hat. So I am working from last three years at Red Hat with Hyperconverse product. Uh, today I'm going to discuss about little bit uh, about the Hyperconverse, how we are using Hyperconverse solution using Overt and Cluster. So this is my today's topic introduction to our word hyperconverge and uh, I'm going to discuss about our plus cluster so I'm going to tell about how we made the solution uh, using our as a hypervisor management tool and cluster is storage so before <clears throat> move on uh, i just wanted to share the agenda today what i'm going to discuss uh so here we go the agenda is you know first i'm going to obviously talk about virtualization or uh, those who don't know about the virtualization because the virtualization is is the key uh, area uh, to achieve overt hyper convergence and I will, I'm going to talk about a little bit uh, overt and the final one is overt hyperconvergence solution. So well, uh, if you see the virtualization nowadays, we are the complete industry is moving towards virtualization world, right? And uh, what does it mean? Uh, so if you see a typical uh, scenario like why virtualization can uh, let's say i'm going to uh, start up one company and very small scale company and uh, uh, i have very uh, limited resources also i'm my budget is very low but i want to, to give a try and you know uh, start the company so let's say I have a single server, okay? Uh, I have capacity to buy a single server, not more than that. But we are five people and uh, trying to do something. So to work smoothly, uh, at least five system, every, at least five operating system we need, right? And uh, uh, so how is it possible? You know, uh, here is the bottleneck. Uh, I have single machine, but badly I need five machine uh, to accomplish my work, day to day work. So, if you see the typical uh, traditional server, uh, so what I shown you the single machine, it's like a single operating system on it and on top of it the applica one application is running right or multiple applications are running with different ports mm -hmm. so to overcome it right i need uh, some solution by using a single server what i have but i also need to solve my problem uh, using virtualization so that is how virtualization came into picture so your problem is solved you have a single machine doesn't matter so uh no need to worry about that you just install a virtualization layer on top of your machine and you know you can spun off as many as vm you want as per your resource availability and you can assign so it's vm to your each colleague or each employee so that they can you know do their job so that's the importance of virtualization and uh, we thought about it uh, uh, you know 10 12 years back and um we tried to make a good software uh virtualization management software and uh, that's what Overt is so if you see the overt uh, 
Oh, what is a virtualization management application which will manage your hardware nodes, uh, uh, manage the storage network, everything. You uh, you just deploy and monitor VMs in a data center, and uh, yeah, how it is basically using KVM as a hypervisor to manage VMs. Okay, so this is the typical architecture of a very high level, although it has a lot more things on it, but this is the very, you know, very high level, just a simple overview. Like we have a client, engine client, uh, with uh, three different uh, category. Uh, one is uh, a user portal through uh, our management user portal. Uh, only VMs can be managed by user. So here we have, you know, quota and everything and the user accessibility. Uh, uh, restrictions everything is here so another is web admin which will be have full access so admin can manage everything we'll see next slide a letter slides how it is and of course to manage you know uh, via api we provide rest api and different sdks so here is the engine over what code is running which is called our engine and uh, uh, we have integrated with LDAF and uh, we are using Postgres DB to uh, store minimal engine data to manage the uh, management tool and we have different uh, servers on it. So let's say in three host we have uh, installed our engine. So why three host? You can install in a standalone, but the problem is you will not have a J availability, right? Uh, a high availability you don't get if you install in a standalone. So that's why I'm showing here three host. So if any host goes down, then you your production is still up. Uh, your VMs are still up and running because the VMs will be live migrated one host to another host so to get uh, interact with host and uh, engine core we use json rpc and engine uh, can interact with host through a tool called vdsm which is a python based tool okay so that's about a little bit in depth about uh, you know or what now come to hyperconvergence so hyperconvergence you guys know right uh, it's a very uh, good solution uh, for the business because of uh, cost effectiveness so earlier when people uh, use the most system for their deployment uh, software deployment so they need to use multiple servers like one is for compute another is for storage other is for network blah blah so the maintenance will be high right and the cost will be very high uh, also the performance matters because your one server need to communicate with another server uh, physical server through network so the bandwidth also matter and the performance also matter so to overcome this, uh, you know, uh, one concept came, why not everything club together into a single machine? And uh, uh, build your software or deploy your software on it. So that's what hyperconverse means. You know, combines compute, storage, network, and management capabilities, everything in a single deployment. Okay, so this is our typical, uh, over hyperconverse uh, architecture uh, i have shown you uh, the over architecture now the coming to hyperconverse architecture you have a public network and it's connected to three different node and uh, you have uh, over engine running uh, in any one of the node as a vm right 
then you have uh chemo kpm leopard bdsm everything and the virtual machine is running and you have other uh, uh obviously three different stories uh sorry three copy of stories in each machine you have let's say cluster so we have cluster volume created uh on three servers it's a replica three cluster volume or you can do replica two plus arbiter and you have storage network so storage network is typically it should be uh you know uh, very uh, high bandwidth network its uh, recommendation is 10 gig network and the public network uh, recommendation is 1 gig network so uh, public network only will be used by our management ui and the uh, you know back end storage network will be uh, used by dedicated storage network okay so to deploy hyperconverse about hyperconverse right we provide two different uh, style of deployment one is you know ui based a lot of people love the ui so we thought about the ui and uh, you know we made very attractive and very simple on uh, ui based deployment using cockpit and another one is of course cli based which provides end to end deployment just uh, through ansible rule so only what you need to do is you just uh, prepare your inventory inventory skeleton is already available just you put your entries and just do one run uh, cluster and civil run command that's all so with couple of minutes your complete infrastructure will be available your complete sorry setup will be available that i deployed okay so another is simply copied with best ui which is see very simple only few steps uh, few tabs we have introduced typically three tabs where the uh you know user inputs required one is host host is uh, only to provide i talked about right front end network and back end network storage network so here you need to mention the which is the front end and which is the storage network we also uh, support uh you know uh, both ipv6 and ipv4 deployment so here only uh six entries you need to add and then a volume generally you don't need because we provide default if you need provide uh, three default volumes in in data vm store if you need based on your uh, requirement if you need more volume you can just click add and uh, just give the volume name everything will be automated way and in the brick tab uh, there are couple of things you need to choose and in the review tab you know it's a final review whether your everything is entry is correct or not so in the brick tab basically you need to choose uh, uh, what's the size of your disk and whether you are going to use multipath or not uh, uh those are the stops or video you are going to use video or not those are the stops we'll see in a next slide so uh we have a lot more features uh, uh valuable features on it but some uh, basic features i have uh noted down here like ipv4 ipv6 support and uh, dm multipath support you can enable or disable multipath on your device by clicking on checkbox okay and we support nbd uh, which is very important for those who are uh, you know looking for more security uh, generally uh, government sectors uh, they looks for more security right so that's why we provide the encryption and decryption of your device through network and 
we support video video is a very good feature for uh, you know dedupe and compression so you can compress your data and make use of more space other features like useful features are node replacement yeah in your cluster if uh, one host is down and uh, some hardware failure happened which means uh, you know uh, you need to replace your hardware or replace your server then uh, we provide the solution like just click and uh, do your replacement done also we provide upgrade uh, because looking into the users and customers uh, every release they need to upgrade right so we thought about it and we provide very useful and very simple way of upgrading your uh, setup just give a single click and choose which of the uh, server you want to upgrade get it done and also network creation which over supports uh, so once your deployment is done you may need to you know uh, segregate your network so which is a cluster network means storage network and which is a uh, front-end network so front-end network will be automatically created during your deployment but uh, the storage network you know we provide an ansible rule uh, playbook uh, to create automatically okay so i think i talked about this and now if you see the brick tab right so we support jboard uh, red 6 and red 10 uh, along with if you see the multipath configuration uh, user can uh, use the multipath device if they want uh, or if they don't then they can just disable it right so everything will be taken care during your deployment as per your uh, inputs then here host based uh, selection you need to choose from top down if your hosts are not identical i mean the device name and uh, you know size then you can provide here uh, the input and you can enable enable and dedupe compression if you want also we support lvm cache okay so other thing i wanted to talk about nbde because you know many of people may not know uh, what it is eventually uh, i also didn't know before i you know work on it so that's why i thought i should share something uh so it's a policy based uh, decryption right uh which is allowing us uh, people or uh, allowing system to uh decrypt your device by a network so let's say i have root device and uh, i have encrypted it so during the reboot it need passphrase right to, to uh, unlock the hard disk or unlock your uh, root device so they are manual intervention required now think about a typical scenario uh, i have a big production system running and uh, i have multiple servers which are encrypted and uh, now some reason something failure happened or uh, some application uh, need to reboot the system without knowing to the uh, admin uh, on the midnight uh, system got rebooted now your device is encrypted right it needs passphrase to reboot successfully so if you don't think about such kind of solution then uh, your reboot process will be stuck over there unless and until uh, your admin go and enter the passphrase it will not reboot so there will be the risk your business risk will be very high right critical because <clears throat> if multiple server goes uh, rebooted then you may not be come back because of the passphrase issue 
then when uh, system uh, system admin will realize and they'll uh, try to log into the server then they'll see oh it's rebooted it needs pass press then it will be too late right so to how to automate that that's why nbd uh, mechanism came into picture so it's a plugin i uh, nbd use a plugin called clevis uh, you know clevis framework and a plugin called pins so what you do is you give all the information uh, about your system or server to a different server okay and bound through a network so uh, bound through a network means your other server which is called a tongue server and your server should have network connectivity right uh, so your tank server will be uh, keep on monitoring your server uh, which are bound to it and uh, when it's required passphrase uh, during reboot uh, or anything when it's required passphrase it will automatically supply so that your uh, reboot will be not hampered right so that's the typical solution you can go and uh, read a little bit more about nvd a throw uh you know uh, from your from web but this is how uh, the nvd works and we have a very good you know example uh, how to do setup and all everything here so it's open source you can go and read now once your setup is done right so I talked about right user portal and admin portal in uh, overt architecture so this is the uh, admin portal looks like so this is the typical dashboard and uh, you have multiple options like compute compute will have virtual machines uh, and uh, hosts uh, data center cluster everything you can manage through computer and network network i talked about right front end network and storage network from network tab you can create multiple networks based on your resource availability and come to storage storage is mainly based for you know your storage what you are using like cluster save uh, not save sorry a cluster nfs uh iscsi those are the supported storage for our word right now so uh, here you will have uh, you know volumes for cluster you can manage your volumes from here or you can uh, create a storage domain where your virtual machine will be hosted right and of course the administration portal all the admin operation you can do and we have event staff this is the monitoring uh, purpose so everything will be monitored uh, frequently through our system and uh, you know uh, send send back to the admin uh, as a notification like okay this is wrong happened or this is done this is successfully done blah blah okay so during setup also you can you know provide your there is the option you can provide your ip address sorry email addresses so that anything goes wrong you will get the email notification as well so now uh, let's let talk about a little bit node replacement so in the node replacement these are the simple logic we have used uh, regarding the cluster uh, host like you have to do the host preparation and from other nodes you need to get the peer information and uh, you need to do a cluster volume reconfiguration uh, and you know it supports both you know, whether you have the same fqdn as before which you want to replace or you all together you may have different fqdn so we provide uh, 
you know ansible role for that uh, you just put your information required information and just run a playbook so it will do automatically for you everything otherwise you can go to the award management and you know uh, you can do a own node reinstallation and it will be taken care but this will be coming in next release this feature but overt uh, the node replacement feature is already available uh, in cluster ansible roles okay okay so now come to uh, another major uh, feature called cluster upgrade so under compute if you go to cluster you'll see the upgrade uh, button here so once you click on that you know it will pop up all the uh, node under that cluster so only you need to check which are the node you want to upgrade just do the click and do upgrade it will do everything automatically for you okay so that's all about the hyper convergence uh, very high level because of time constraints i uh, you know couldn't uh, elaborate explicitly everything but uh, yeah of course you can go and check in our robot site everything will be fine because it's open source so everything will be open to all so generally talking to the overt you know uh, why overt is so popular and why it has very large uh, community first of all it's very simple so the simplicity is the uh, most important thing, uh, you know uh, adjective for overt and second is very stable which is very important so overt is very matured very well productized uh, product so uh, stability is there a lot of functionalities which are required for day-to-day uh, -day people or uh, day-to-day -day business people to solve complex problems right so we have functionality it is highly secured we are using different security mechanism uh, you know to secure our data and of course it's a very large community support so uh, that's why it is very very popular go and try it so you'll see how good it is right now come to you know contribution part so as i mentioned it's open source uh, everywhere everyone uh, are welcome to contribute to the project so uh, this is uh, the typical information how you can join the community how you can contribute what are the things you need to look we are using get it for you know code review so these are the information i can use mailing list from here and also you can we have channel irc uh has over it, which you can follow and shoot your question if you have any doubt right so that's all for this session hope you enjoy and it's useful for you and uh, please please go and try and send us a feedback thank you all no questions if you have any questions